Today, we're gonna shed some light through Kyle's cage and many other brand new cool things. Cue the intro. Yep, that's right. Kyle is now in this corner as opposed to that corner. So it's a lot cooler. I think it makes a lot more space and his hide box is hidden where it used to be the focus of attention. I feel like in that corner, cause that's all you saw when you got in the room, right? But now it's a bit hidden. All you see when you get in the room is him and it's fantastic. But with Kyle in that corner and no enclosures in that corner, you might be wondering where the hell is Minnie? That's a good question. She is, of course, in her house, but right here in a different room. Guys, we are in the Tegu room, which has now been officially rebaptized Brazil. So, we are in an animal room that is, of course, way more humid than the other room. So, what we decided to do is all of our tropical rainforest animals, which right now is our tegus and our iguana, is going to share the same room because they're from the same range. They already share the same range, they can share the same room, and that'll help Mini shed way better because for a while she's had not the best shed ever, so it'll just give her a push and help her do that. So that'll be good. And it'll also bring some humidity up in the room as well, because we're gonna transfer the misking system sometime this week, that's not done, but that's gonna happen this week as well. They're gonna have the misking system and the room over there is the room closest to the bathroom. So I don't mind hauling the hose all the way there instead of all the way here. As a side effect, of course, you get a room where you're now completely surrounded by lizards. And that is one of the best things. I don't know if you guys remember in Mystic 1.0, which is our old apartment in Montreal in another city, we used to have enclosures literally 360 degrees and it used to go all the way up to the ceiling. So it's very strange not to have rooms that are totally filled with animals now. Uh, like I suppose like to have one room that's totally filled with animals and we have three that are medium filled, right? So we decided we want Minnie to join this room here so she was shed properly, but also because she's in a climate suited for her now. You know, this room is way higher humidity, just like Brazil, her natural range, and just like the Tegus, right? So why not sink two ships with one stone, right? We don't kill birds here. But wait, you think this is the big change? Or you think this is the big change? That's not the big change, although it's a big change. The big change is actually this beautiful tank right here. I know it's not something conventional. Uh, Chipotle is in here right now, so that's his new house, but it's totally unconventional. It's an octagon terrarium from Hagen, and those are discontinued. If you guys live in Canada or, you know, visited pet shops a lot when you were kids, you probably remember this. Uh, it tended to have like bunnies or guinea pigs in there, right? And this is a, a model that we've been looking for forever, right? We really wanted it as a centerpiece and we actually found one on Kijiji. So that ended up being our special project for this week. And look at how cool this is. Like, it's just, it, it doesn't, I don't know if the video, does, does, it, does it do it justice of the scale? Because it's three feet by three feet, right? At, in an octagon formation, right? So. It actually takes a lot of room. It's very, very nice. And it's uh, almost 24 high. I think it's 22 high, right? So Chipotle is having the time of his life in, in his new enclosure. He actually spent pretty much all day on his log yesterday right there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he hasn't even tried his hammock, right? Which normally is his favorite part of any enclosure. So that just tells you if he didn't even go to his favorite spot and he's still out exploring it about, then that's because he totally loves it. Take a look, he looks really cute. So Chipotle is not the only one to have some change this week. In fact, this little Aki monitor that we got in last episode has already started to bloom into a really, really placid animal. Look at there, right here, she's right there, looking at my finger, she's licking my finger. Not only that, but we also decided on a name for this little girl. So you guys, I think, will love this name. We really love it. I think it fits perfectly. And if there's any Australians in the house, you guys will love this most of all. Sydney, the Aki monitor. Sydney, of course, for the city in Australia with the big opera house. It is absolutely a beautiful city and this is an absolutely beautiful animal. So we decided to pay homage to Australia in naming her because she's an Australian species. I also wanted to name her Crikey, but Roxanne didn't want to do the accent. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> now let's feed her a super worm or two. What do you guys say? All right, you guys will be able to witness the absolute progress here. I'll put my hand right here and this little super worm right there and she'll make the leap. Look at that. 
Still she got a bit shy. scared, but it's okay. It's okay. We're gonna just give it to her. She did the trick for today, so she can just have the warm right there. I don't know if you guys saw her eat, but she's absolutely gorgeous when she eats. I'll try to make her eat on her basking platform after because she just looks so good up there. She got it. Right up there. She's not used to oh, the she's camera in the court. either. She's in the court. Yeah, this is obviously one of the first times that we film her for real, right? But this is one of the coolest sights ever. Mini, mini monitor eating in the counter light. Beautiful. All right, now let's move on to something else. So this week started off a kind of a bummer, as many of you know, and I I'm guessing the entire reptile industry knows at this point. Um, Brian Barczyk passed away this uh, Monday, and it's uh, probably one of the most devastating things that could happen to this industry. Now, you've seen a thousand tribute videos already, probably, and I don't want to drag this on, but if you guys are any familiar with my life and what I've lived through in my life, um, you all know that this doesn't hit that far away from home for me. And on January 15th, my brother's birthday, Brian Barczyk gave his last breath. But one thing that I want you guys to understand is that even though I didn't really talk about Brian in the time that he was suffering, I can't deny the influence that this person has had on my life. If it wasn't for Brian, this gorgeous animal would still probably scare the crap out of me. And Brian was that for me, not just for me. I think Brian was that for a lot of people their introduction to reptiles, but I used to watch Brian when I was a kid with my dad on TV. When I rediscovered his content, I was like maybe 20, 21, just moved to Montreal with my girlfriend and pretty much looking for a way to reinvent myself. Brian gave me hope that there was an industry that could accept me with open arms, where I could work with animals that are fascinating and to gain their trust. Not that I think they'll see this, but I still want to offer my most sincere condolences to the family and to his friends and to his employees and to anybody who had their life impacted by Brian. It will be so missed by many. And honestly, I said it before, but this industry will never be the same again. Anyway, I don't want to end on a bummer note, guys, but this is not something that you can really bounce back from. But we will do one thing. Follow me. I'll put it back. So Brian's parting words to YouTube was be kind to people. And his message throughout his entire career was inspire people to do great things, love animals, and be good to people. And those are all things that we can do in order to help maintain his legacy. And his legacy is going to be the aquarium, no doubt. It's going to be the coolest thing that's ever been built. I don't have any doubts about that. We will make our best efforts to be there at the opening. That is something that I really think is important to me. And even though I've never met him, this person has influenced my life too much for me not to support the opening day of his legacy. And I do encourage you guys to do the same, because that's going to be such a party. That place is beautiful. I just can't wait to see it. I bet you guys can too. But the two other parts of his mission, be kind to people, inspire people to love animals, those are the most important things that we can do, I think, in order to keep his spirit alive. And it doesn't have to be big Gandhi gestures either. It can just be like some compassion for somebody else. And when it comes to loving animals, I think it's our job to inspire the next generation to like animals and to know how to name them and stuff instead of like brands or like celebrities or whatever. I think it's more important that a kid is able to tell me what animal this is. And I'm pretty sure that that goes the same for Brian. I think he values those things more than materialistic things. I think that's what made him special, right? So here we go guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, I hope you guys can take that message to heart 
And uh, I hope you guys like the changes because that happened even though the rest of it is pretty much a bummer, but that happened this week as well. And we wanted to show it to you guys because guys, we're super excited, especially this tank right here. Like, it's just sad that I'm bummed out while talking about it because I was excited. Like, I've been looking forward to this tank for a year now, probably. Like, oh. when have we started looking for it? Like, so long ago. And it just so happens that the day we bring it back is the day that we hear the news. So. My parting words for you guys this week is don't be too hard on yourself. Um, this is a difficult period for most people. It's almost like losing a father figure, even though like he's not necessarily our father, but he can mentor in the same way and that stuff can be super painful. So I would urge you guys to be easy with yourself and to not expect the world of yourself in this week or the next week or whatever. And if you guys really do need to talk, my Instagram DMs are always open, Mystic Animals. You guys can always hit us up. All right, my name is Matt. This is Chipotle. That's Roxanne behind the camera. Hi. And we will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for checking out this video, everybody. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button. And if you really loved it, why don't you subscribe? It's free, you know?